Okay, when doing these belusov zapatinsky reaction in a Petri dish, um, we're going to use the following reagents. We're going to use 6 centimetres cubed of 0.5 molar potassium bromate, 0.6 centimetres cubed of 6 molar sulfuric acid, 1 centimetre cubed of 0.5 molar potassium bromide, 2.5 centimetres cubed of 0.5 molar malonic acid, and finally 1 centimetre cubed of 0.025 molar ferroin. At least that's what we think it is. It's the commercially bought ferroin that we'll be using as the indicator. Uh, this is how we make them up, and we'll make them up in a boiling tube here. Um, so quickly to start, here's the... Potassium bromate. So let's start with six centimeters cubed of that. Next we have 0.6 molar. Six centimeter cube, rather, of six molar sulfuric acid. Um, not being extremely accurate with this, uh, I'm going to use this dropping pipette here, which has graduations for about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, so I use about 0.6 there. In goes the sulfuric acid. Next comes the potassium bromide, one centimeter cubed, and this. We want to do as quickly as possible because it starts to generate some bromine, uh, which is not pleasant. So there, one centimeter cube, in it goes, and you see immediately the orange color of the bromine being developed. And in order to counter that, we want to have two and a half centimeters cube of melanoic acid as quickly as we can. Two and a half centimeters cube of malonic acid. And what we tend to do now is to swirl that mixture, mix it up until it goes clear. And there we go, that's the reaction, it's finally colourless. Uh, now we can apply, oh, put in the one centimetre cubed of ferroin. This is an iron complex with a deep red colour. So in goes the ferroin and immediately you see a deep red solution. No precipitate produced uh, when you do it this way. That is poured into the petri dish, and if it's a plastic petri dish, just agitate so that you get coverage of the whole of the base. And now it's a case of wait and for something to happen. As we're waiting for the reaction to start. It's all starting very quickly. You see that this one here, uh, pointing with the pipette, this one has been going for some hours. And if you leave overnight, 
um, by the next day it will become a colourless solution like this. Uh, here's the one that we've just prepared. You can probably see, pick up some darkening on the left hand side of the petri dish here. In fact the whole petri dish has gone rather dark. it can take some time to start to uh, start going I may mean, just detect something here and a few more patches appearing And you can probably see now the characteristic uh, ring pattern that's often seen with this reaction. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Now as the first set of patterns spread throughout the petri dish, this uh, can be quite slow to start and if you leave it over a period of hours it goes through um, multiple cycles and they do tend to get rather quicker and then as the ferroin loses intensity you get um, more diverse colours, more lighter colours develop.
Now each one of these is quite individual and you never know what you're going to get. Um, we'll just let the pattern spread across the surface of the petri dish there. It's unique patterning. And then after a time you do see bubbles starting to develop. And there as the system starts to clear again, there's nothing to be lost by, in fact, agitating the mixture. If you get lots of bubbles you can cause them to burst just by tilting the petri dish and as I say nothing to be lost you can mix and the system will again uh, start from its new starting point. <laughs>